In your lesson files under chapter 3, you're going to find this folder. You need to take this folder and move it to your desktop. I'm going to take it and copy it and move it to my desktop. Even if you're on a PC, you should do this. In Maya, what we're going to do is set that as a project. So we go File, Project, Set. Here's X-Wing, and we set it. By setting a project, it allows me to browse and save as a lot easier. So I, if I save scene as, notice it automatically goes to the X-Wing. This way you don't lose assets, because any time that you get textures into the mix, you'll want to set a project for those textures. Which allows me now to bring in those textures also. I can go into Hypershade and import those textures one at a time. But to quickly do this, I want to show you a shortcut in order to do it the right way. If I go to the Finder window and now go to that X-Wing, I can take from an Internet Explorer, or Explorer window or an Apple Finder window and click and drag these into the Textures tab in here in Hypershade. Again, that is Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Okay, that brought this up. I went to the Textures tab, click and drag those in. Okay. Now, textures are one thing, but they need materials in order to set on 3D objects. So we're going to have to make three different materials here. I click this Lambert three times, and I'm going to rename these. It's very important that you rename them with capital letters. If this happens to you, like if you double click by accident, you can go to the materials tab and also rename them here. So rename capital side. And you have to you have to hit enter after the just like that. Oh, in Lambert one you cannot rename. Sorry. Lambert 1 is the default material. Um, there is no way to rename it at all. We're going to be using that default material here shortly, though. Okay, so check this out. Textures tab, Materials tab. This is your work area. Okay, You can use Alt and scroll out. You can also navigate this using Alt, Middle Mouse button or command middle mouse button. Okay. What I could do here is drag these down if I need to. I can go to the textures tab and now I can take middle mouse button click and drag these to this one. Go to default. So they're now attached by the string and I can click and drag these around to see if they're attached. Middle mouse button, click and drag, go to default. And middle mouse button, click and drag, and go to default. This work area is commonly known as either the work area or the sandbox, depending upon who you're modeling with. And it's a very, very nice feature within Hypershade. It is also the scariest thing that students have the hardest time with for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> So now that I have these in the Hypershade and they are attached to materials, we can now go and apply these to polygon objects. But first, let me show you a couple things here. Um, take this for example. A lot of times I see this happen. If you lose your work area, all you do is have to go back to your side, front, or top, and you can click this button right here. Notice it launches this so you can see the complete input and output of the material and texture. The ones you should be paying attention to are these two for right now. Pay no attention to this, the placement of, or the output to the camera. Okay. But I can get all of them in view if I wanted to. All right, so now that we have a little bit of hypershade under our belt, just a little bit, let's go on to the next video where we try to figure out how to get from hypershade to polygons. All right, 
meet me in the next video